So today is the World Stroke Day. And why is this day celebrated? It is to create awareness about stroke, which is a disabling condition and has significant amount of impact on the person and the family, society and the nation, of course. So what can we do to reduce the burden of this and prevent this? That's the awareness campaign for the World Stroke Day. So what is stroke? Stroke is a condition when the blood supply to an area of the brain is affected, causing some cell changes in that area of the brain and which will result in different types of manifestations. So it could be a face weakness, it could be a speech change, it could be an arm weakness, leg weakness, imbalance, depending upon which area of the brain is affected. How common is stroke? It's said that almost one in four individuals after 25 of years of age may have a stroke in their lifetime. There is data available from different countries about 7 lakhs per year in US are said to have a stroke. Some data says every 40 seconds there's a stroke. In India, we have roughly about 100 to 150 per 100,000 people who can have a stroke. But that's one thing. Second thing is once a stroke, there's a chance of a recurrence of a stroke. And the third important thing is that a large percentage of people may be left with a disability can cause financial implications and health-related implications. So what can be done to prevent this? I think the first important thing is to recognize something called as risk factors. So risk factors are those conditions which lead to a increased chances of having stroke. And simply to remember, either you can remember the S's. So that is the sugar, control the sugar, control sedentary lifestyle, avoid smoking, avoid stress, alcoholism, control blood pressure. And we have now another one that is the snoring. That's another S or the entity called as obstructive sleep apnea. And that is snoring with pauses in breathing can lead to changes in our arteries and thus can cause a stroke. So in this video, I'm going to explain the relationship about sleep apnea and stroke and why does it occur, how to recognize it, how to diagnose it and to treat it. And what proof do we have so far? So there is ample proof now and research has clearly shown that sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea is a risk factor for stroke, just like all the others that I have mentioned. How does one recognize this condition or who is the likely candidate or when should we get alert that we should look for sleep apnea? So if there is history of snoring, excessive daytime sleepiness, observed choking at night, these are the major three fact, uh, symptoms which should prompt one to look for sleep apnea. In addition, there could be things like other features such as increased weight and obesity. But unfortunately, when patients come with a stroke, these things are not the first to be asked or to look for. And sometimes even post-stroke, it's not easy to identify these symptoms. And thus, the diagnosis is often missed. How common are these two? There are various uh, uh, information in the literature. The range is almost from 30% to 60-70% of patients with stroke may have a coexisting sleep apnea. So why is it important to detect it? Because if you detect it and treat it, you will prevent a subsequent or the next stroke. So there is a primary prevention. That means we don't allow a first episode of stroke to occur. And then there is a secondary prevention. That means once a stroke has occurred, we don't want a second time for the stroke to happen. Simply to just share that why does this happen? So people often ask, so what is the relationship? Why? We know now that in these periods of pauses, or which are called as apneic periods, there is a change in our sympathetic system. It's called as a sympathetic surge. 
and that system causes release of certain um, chemicals or hormones in our body. And in addition, there is an increased inflammatory response. All these put together cause changes in the lining of the arteries, causes the platelets to collect and form clumps, and that's how the clots can go in the arteries and reach the brain and cause a stroke. So that's how they are related. So how does one test for it? Simple tests are just to ask for the common questions that I have mentioned about snoring, do you feel tired and sleepy, pauses in breathing, blood pressure, obesity, it's commoner in males. Those are the few things to watch out for. The confirmatory test is a test called as a sleep study, which can be done in two ways. One is what is called as a complete sleep study, which has multiple sensors on your head, measures snoring, breathing, oxygen, all through the night in the presence of a trained technician who will detect whether you have apneas or not. The other one is something called as a screening test in which only the snoring, breathing, and oxygen may be measured. What about treatment? So treatment is behavioral measures. That means we do work on all the other risk factors such as avoid smoking, control blood pressure, diabetes, alcoholism, improve physical activity. So those measures and improve your lipid control, diet and nutrition. And second is specific treatment. So specific treatment is that this is the breathing pipe. And when this blocks, this is called as an apnea. So we need to open it. And that is done by a device called as a PAP which is giving air under pressure, that is positive airway pressure. The mask is worn in the, connected to the machine, which gives air and keeps the airway open. So what is the proof so far? It's been seen that treatment with the BAP can improve the outcome of the current stroke and will help in preventing a future stroke, also help in controlling blood pressure. So thus, I do hope um, that on this stroke day, we do take cognizance of all the risk factors, work on the risk factors for ourselves and our loved ones and the families and whoever we can help so as to prevent this condition called stroke, which is one of the leading causes of morbidity and uh, mortality. And recognize that sleep apnea or snoring, which is often neglected, and 80 to 90% of patients with sleep apnea remain undetected. Detect them, or offer the specific treatment so as to improve their outcome and their quality of life. I do hope this has been helpful, and thank you again for listening.